Welcome to the Right Age of Journal. My name is Sulate. I believe that art is a skill and that skills can be learned. I have been teaching fine art basics to absolute beginners since January 2011. During South Africa's COVID-19 lockdown, I created this channel for my students to keep our classes going. Afterwards, I opened the channel to the general public so that you can benefit from it too. If you like the videos I post, please like, subscribe, click the notification button and share. Links to my three instructional art ebooks, my website and my Facebook page will be in the description below. Hi guys, welcome to this week's video. Um, this week we're looking at colored pencil landscapes. And the format for this video is going to be different because I didn't have time during the week to do an actual video. So I remembered that I had all these step-by-step -step photographs of a colored pencil landscape that I did a few years ago. And we're going to see what we can do with that. Ready, let's start. So the first step, of course, is to do a graphite underdrawing or a pure contour drawing, as it's also um, known. I didn't do an actual line drawing for this one. What I did was more of a shaded drawing, if that's the correct term. What I did was I, instead of using lines, I held my pencil in the, was it the underhand position where it's flat underneath your hand so that you have more of the graphite. I held my, <coughs> sorry, my pencil like that and I basically shaded instead of drawing lines. Um, yes, that's pretty much what's going on here. So the second step after you've done your graphite drawing is to choose and test the colors you're going to use. I chose a variety of blues, greens and browns with a warm gray <coughs> for this picture. Um, nothing in nature is one flat color, it's always shades of a color or even shades of different colors combined. So for the sky and especially for the water, I, I used a variety from very light blue to a very deep dark blue. Um, and the same for the greens and the browns. The lightest brown I used was yellow ochre and then I added grey to tone down some of the vibrancy of the colours in some places. We'll get to that bit. Right, so the third, third step in this process is to do what is called a tonal underdrawing. For my tonal underdrawing for this picture, I used the yellow ochre to give it a warm background. Um, the, the warm yellow ochre I used mainly around the shadowy areas. The, in the tonal underdrawing, you basically establish and define the shadow parts. Um, I started out with the yellow ochre to give it a bit of warmth because I wanted my in product my in picture to have a warmish undertone but shadows tend to have a cool undertone so then I added the darkest blue I had um, to develop the shadows further in my tonal underdrawing and you do this all over 
here's a bit of a close up of the background what I did in the background with the cool undertone um, tonal underdrawing how I developed the shadowy parts you will see in some places that I used less pressure on the blue and in other places more pressure this is how you develop your shadows in your tonal underdrawing Um, here I did the tonal underdrawing of the water and again I remember that where there's a white highlight leave the white open rather you will see in this picture that um, towards there's not a definite edge or border between where there's shadow and where there's highlight on the water it seamlessly fades out towards the highlight in the middle um, and I carried on with the tonal underdrawing establishing and developing the shadows in the foreground as you can see here's a close-up of the water and the rocks in the foreground Right, so step four is to start adding the actual colors. Here you can see in the background, I started adding the greens and the browns. Um, you keep this, this part of the process, you keep reworking and layering until you feel that you've done enough. Okay, so there's a close up that, just that you can get an idea for the green the lighter green and the darker green here I'm just further developing and adding gray in parts remember this is in the background so I added grays here um, to tone down the vibrancy of the colors because in the background there's less vibrance and less details and less contrast between colors than there is in the foreground and this is how you create the illusion of depth in your pictures, your drawings, your artworks. Uh, here I move to the water in the middle ground adding light blues and dark blues and medium blues um, I didn't add a lot of grays here where I did add grays was in the rocky formation in front of the vegetation on the left hand side and where the little part of the beach is there uh, next to the lake that's where I added it's the colors are lighter and less bright there as the colors are lighter and less bright in the, on the rocks on the uh, right hand side and in the background on that mountain slope with the vegetation um, you, you, you constantly go back to make um, adjustments in other parts of the picture as you move your way forward to the foreground I normally work from the background to the foreground because it helps that I don't smudge what I've already done if I would start with a foreground I'd have to turn the picture upside down to do the background eventually otherwise I'm going to smudge what I did in the foreground so in general I work from background to foreground which means in a practical sense from top to bottom in my pictures okay here I started working on the rocks in the foreground now you will start seeing that I'm using more warm colors in the foreground than I did in the background the background to, to create that illusion of distance and depth the background is normally cooler colors and the foreground is normally warmer than the background this is what it looks to our eyes how we see it in real life is that colors far away seem to be cooler and colors close to us seem to be warmer now you must not think that blues and greens are just cool colors you do get warm greens and cool blues or warm blues and cool greens same thing with um, 
traditionally warm colors you can get a cool red or a cool purple or violet or even a I, I haven't yes you can get a cool yellow I guess anyway so don't get stuck on traditional um, color wheel organization or split up of colors And also, there is you, you have to work in and incorporate a balance, balance between cool and warm colors. Here you can see in the foreground, um, let me bring it closer to you. Here you can see in the foreground that I'm added, I added a little, just a teensy tinge of blue to cool down and balance out the warm um, reddish browns and yellowy browns in the foreground. Right, continued in the foreground. You can see there's a balance between warm colors and cooler colors. And you can see there's a lot more contrast between dark and light and a lot more detail in the foreground than there is in the background. These are the finishing touches. Just adding a very light yellow ochre. I, if I remember correctly, I combined it with a very light layer of a reddish brown in some places and adding the splashes of grass in between. finished picture. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!